now listen to Father Knows Best, transcribed starring Robert Young as Father. Welcome to Springfield, and another half-hour visit with the folks in the white frame house on Maple Street. Sit back and enjoy life with the Andersons, Kathy, Bud, Betty, Margaret, and Jim, as the head of this typical American household again sets out to prove that father knows best. According to an old philosopher named Bo B., whom I've never heard of, it is seldom that we find out how great our resources are until we are thrown upon them. A firm exponent of this sage viewpoint of self-reliance is one Jim Anderson. However, little did Jim suspect what was ahead of him this noon when Margaret confronted him at the door with a telegram. Like this. A telegram? From your folks, you say? Anything wrong, Margaret? Oh, no. They're moving. Dad says they have to leave Toledo. He's been transferred to Omaha. Oh. Honey, why are there never any hangers in this hall closet? I can't find any place to hang my coat. Dad says they're moving right away. I've been hanging my coat on a hook so long, everyone thinks I have a pointed spine. (laughs) Jim, how long is it since you've been back to Toledo? Oh, I don't know. A long time. Well, you ought to enjoy the trip then. Yes, it would be very... Wait a minute. Enjoy what trip? Well, they want you to come to Toledo. I'm not going to help them move. All they want you to do is look over all that stuff we have stored in their basement. Tell them what we want to keep and what we want to throw away. Oh. There's quite a lot. Some furniture and dishes. Trunk full of clothes. Your old saxophone. (laughs) Gee, I'd forgotten that thing. I wonder if I could still play it. What do you mean, still play it? Could you ever? (laughs) <laughs> All right. I was good enough for Hoagie Schultz and his campus cats. Mother! I used to take a whole solo chorus of Moonlight on the Ganges. Mother! I'd like to get a hold of that thing again. Mother, has anyone called me? Who are you expecting? Nobody. Oh. <laughs> but if Glenn should call, tell him you think I'm at the library. He likes the intellectual type. If Ralph calls, tell him I've locked myself in my room. I bet he'll be glad to get that news. <laughs> He's so utterly old-fashioned. You'd think we were still living way back in the 1930s. <laughs> way back then? He's fuming. I mean fuming, simply because I went to that dance Saturday with Glenn. I finally told him I never wanted to speak to him again as long as I live. Good for you. So if he calls, let me know, because I want to talk to him. Yes, Betty. Now, please don't bother us, because your father is planning a trip to Toledo. Now, wait a minute. You are, Father? Margaret, I don't see how I can get away right now. There's a lot of things coming up at the office. Oh, it would do you good to get away from that old office for a few days. Why are you going, Father? Oh, Grandpa and Grandma are moving to Omaha, and they want us to get our stuff out of there. Furniture and a saxophone. Oh, they meant. Dad. Bud, Father's going to Toledo. He is? To get a saxophone. You can probably get one right here in town, Dad. What do you want to use it for? I don't want to use it for anything. Seems kind of silly to get one, then. (laughs) Bud, the reason your father is going to Toledo is to check over a lot of things he and I accumulated during the period when we had to live with my folks. I wish you wouldn't always refer to it as the period when we had to live with your (laughs) family. Sounds like I couldn't support you. Well, I didn't mean... We just happened to move in there because we were... uh... Broke. (laughs) Well, Dad, speaking of trips, that's what I wanted to ask you about. Joe Phillips and me are planning one. You are? Yeah, for this summer. We're going to Paris, France. Paris, France? On a cattle boat. On a cattle boat? Sounds like a pleasant boy. Can I go? I can just see you and Joe and the cattle strolling up the Rue de la Paix. <laughs> well, the cattle aren't going right into Paris. Where are they going? Oh, they'll... Joe didn't say. 
They're probably just going along for the ride. Bud, you can't go to France. You don't know a single word of French. Well, that doesn't matter. Joe's uncle told us you can go anywhere in the world if all you know how to speak is just English. All you have to do, then, is learn how to speak English, and you'll be all set. <laughs> well, Jim, if you're leaving, I'd better start packing something for you. Margaret, I haven't said I was going. I think you'd welcome the opportunity to get away for a few days. Well, sure, but... Well, I know sometimes I get pretty fed up with the daily routine around here. You know, like I'd like to get away. Sure, I know that, but... Hey, wait a minute. Maybe that's an idea. Why don't you go? Me? Sure. Be a nice change for you. Oh, I couldn't go. Why not? Oh, well, I just couldn't, that's all. Why don't you go, Mother? You can decide what to do with all that stuff as well as I can. Oh, I don't know. They're expecting you, Jim. Mommy! I've got too much to do around here. What, for instance? Mommy, how long does it take for this junk to work? What junk, Kathy? This old... Oh, hello, Daddy. Hi, kitten. This old hair tonic. I put a half a bottle on my hair last night, and it hasn't grown a quarter of an inch even. You should have thought of all this before you got smart and chopped your hair off. Aw, oh, turned blue. <laughs> Lord Mason has got a cousin who was bald at age 19. Well, now, there's an interesting bit of information. <laughs> they called him Shorty. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Hey, Kathy, did you hear about Mother? She's going to Toledo. Are you, Mommy? Well, no. I'm going to Paris, France. <laughs> oh, gosh, I don't get to go any place. Well, I'm not going to Toledo. Your father's the one who's going. Are you going to drop Bud off in the way? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Toby, Paris, France is a lot farther than Toledo. And he's going with a bunch of cattle. I am not. They're just going to be on the boat with us. Why? I don't know. I, I've got to ask Joe more about that. All I know is that it's a lot cheaper to go that way. Well, there's probably a lot of wealthy cattle on there, and they're charging them more. <laughs> oh, I'll get it, I'll get it. It's probably Ralph. Ralph. Let's see now. That's the one she's not going to speak to anymore. Jim, do you want me to pack your gray suit, or do you want to wear it? Look, I'm not going on this trip. You are, remember? Oh, you know I can't go. I don't know why not. I'll go. Well, for one thing, I don't want to go alone. I never have traveled alone. Well, it's high time you started doing it then. The average housewife gets too much in the habit of depending on her husband. Yeah. <laughs> you get into a rut with all your chores here at home. You don't get out enough. Actually, you're deprived of the opportunity of developing any self-reliance because you have no responsibilities. No responsibilities? But it's not your fault, Margaret. If it's anybody's fault, it's mine. I should have seen that you had more chances to get away, to take trips alone. But from now on, I'm going to see to it that you do. Jim, you know I can't just pick up and leave. There's a whole hamper full of clothes that need ironing. So what? They'll keep. They'll be right here when you get back. <laughs> That's the whole trouble. Is there any other reason why you can't leave? No, oh, hundreds of them. Uh, the man from the paint store is going to be here with wallpaper samples for our bedroom. I can get uh, rid of him fast enough. And the PTA is getting ready for the room mother's tea. Mrs. Rodney has been appointed chairman, and I have to give her a lot of information on it. Have you got the information? Yes, it's in a folder. All right, I'll give her the information. That's simple enough. You worry about these things too much. I'm not worrying. It's just If that... you'd run your house more like I run my office, if you'd organize things... You'd have worlds of time to yourself. Oh, sure. Sure. It wasn't Ralph after all. It was Glenn. Did you tell him you were at the library? No. Glenn's awfully sweet, but sometimes he sounds so horribly juvenile. You'd never think he was 16. Well, Margaret, you'd better get upstairs and start packing. I'll call the depot and see if we can get you on that 4.30 train. Well, I don't know, Tim. Come Jim. on now, Margaret. It'll do you good. You can have a nice visit with the folks. Stay a few extra days if you want to. All right. All right, I'll do it. Good girl. Or should I? Certainly you should. Now get going or you'll miss the train. Well, all right. I haven't got anything decent to wear, though. Women never do have. Father. I better call the depot right now. Father. What is it, Betty? 
Is there much difference in your and Mother's ages? Well, there wasn't much difference in our ages until she reached her 35th birthday. (laughs) Since then, the uh, gap has widened a little. Well, I think it should be highly considered. Now, take Glenn and me. I haven't the time right now. He's a full year younger than I am. Well, that's not much. No, it isn't now. But when I'm 40, he'll only be 39. Mm, you better drop him right now. <laughs> yes, Ralph's more my age. I wish I were speaking to him. Dad, whatever it is, bud, hold it. I've got to go in the den and make that phone call. Don't hang on the phone too long, Father. Ralph might call. I'll try not to, but you know how chatty those ticket agents are. <laughs> you better run upstairs and see if you can help your mother get ready. Okay. Daddy! But I haven't time to bother with Kathy. Now you go see what she wants. Daddy! No, I'll come with you and help you ignore her. <laughs> Daddy? Where does everyone hide the phone book? I never can find that thing. It's right on the desk next to the phone. Huh? Oh. <laughs> No wonder I couldn't find it. Daddy, where are you? Dad, how about it? Can I make that trip to Paris, Strands? Oh, I don't know, bud. I've got to have more time to think that over. Here we are, Lexington 227. Joe's uncle says we can work our way across. It won't cost us hardly anything. Well, you better wait a year or so. After all, you're only... Hello. Say, I'd like to get a ticket on the 430 train for Toledo. Daddy. That's right, Toledo. Daddy? Can't you see he's talking on the phone, Dopey? Aw, oh, turn green. Yes, cut it out. What did you say? Yes, round trip. What's a round trip? Uh, Mrs. James Anderson. Fine. Uh, what time does that train leave? Oh, 4.30. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, that's that. Daddy? Just kidding. Can I have some of this stuff here to put on my hair? I don't care. Do whatever you want to. Margaret! Margaret, you're all set. What did you say, dear? Dad, look what Kathy's putting on her hair. He said I could. What is it? It's called Miracle Grow More. Miracle Grow... Let me see that. Oh, my goodness. The scientific plant food. (laughs) Mom bought that to put on her petunias. It says it's guaranteed to make anything grow. It'll not only make your hair grow, but we'll have to harvest you every fall. (laughs) Boy, are you dopey. Ah, turn violet. (laughs) Now then, Jim, what was it you were trying to tell me? Margaret, all I said was that you're all set. (gasps) Kathy, for heaven's sake, what have you done to your hair now? Well, I was just trying to make my hair grow out faster with this stuff here. Miracle grow... Oh, good heavens. All she has to do now is water it twice a day and keep down the weeds. <laughs> well, this settles it. I can't leave. What do you mean? This is no problem. All she's got to do is wash her hair. Again? Now, you hurry and finish packing. But there's the meals and the children's clothes Look, there's and... not a thing I can't handle. You just let yourself get swamped by unimportant details. Meals are unimportant? <laughs> With my training in office procedure, I'll have this place running like clockwork. So stop worrying and get your bags packed. Well, all right. But you carry your bags down for her and I'll get the car out. Kathy, you wash your hair. Dad. Yes? I'm hungry. We will return to the Andersons in a moment. Greater happiness for more people. That's the result of many decades of proving that the American economic system is the best system in the world. Under this system, we've been able to outproduce any other nation, to turn out more goods and services per man hour, and to enjoy a steadily rising standard of living. Remember, the better we produce, the better we live. According to Jim Anderson, the surest way for a wife and mother to lose her self-reliance 
is to stay too close to the shelter of home, losing her strength and confidence in the performance of a few childishly simple tasks about the house. And so, Margaret has been dispatched to handle family business in Toledo, while Jim takes over the trivial task of managing the white frame house on Maple Street. Like this. All right, kids, in the kitchen here. Attention. What is this, the army? <laughs> no, we're simply going to have a little organization. I'm going to show you I how... wonder if Ralph called while we were driving Mother to the station. Betty, are you listening? Sure, but you go ahead and talk, Father. I can hear the phone if it rings. Daddy, is it true that bear grease will make your hair grow? Yes, now that Mother's away and I'm running the house... Do you have any bear grease? Kathy... For Pete's sake, what's bear grease? Probably what they use for greasing bears. <laughs> Stop milling around, all of you, and listen. Who's milling around? Daddy, does my hair look like wire? Hark. It doesn't make any difference. Hark. <laughs> Betty, what's this hark, hark? I thought I heard the phone. Boy, is she gone. She's hearing bells. <laughs> All right, now let's cut out this foolishness. While Mother's away, we're going to show her how easily we can run things around here. Are you listening, bud? Sure. What's the idea of sitting there with your hands cupped over your ears? It's like holding a seashell to your ear. I can hear the waves. <laughs> bud. I can hear you real good. Take your hands down. Kathy, stop rubbing your fuzzy head. Betty, quit listening for the telephone. This is a meeting, and I want all three of you to pay attention. We're listening, Daddy. All right. Now, hear this. I sent Mother on this trip to Toledo for very definite reasons. I want to show her how easily things can be handled here with a little more organization. Mommy runs the house all right. That's true, kitten, but compared to running an office like I do... Managing a house is simple. Dad. Oh, what is it, bud? It's almost five o'clock. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> All right, let's get things organized for dinner, and we'll run this meal like clockwork. Kathy, you set the table. Bud, you peel the potatoes, and uh, Betty, you do the cooking. You see, that's what I'm talking about, system. What are you going to do, Father? I think I'll go out and see if the papers come yet. <laughs> some system. Now, wait a minute, Father. If I get the stove in this deal, what am I supposed to put on it? Why, uh, what you always put on the stove, dinner. Where will I sit the table? In the breakfast room or the dining room, Daddy? Well, there's just the four of us. We'll eat in the breakfast room, kitten. Hey, there's stuff all over the breakfast room table. Don't move those things. I'm cutting out a dress on the table. I'll put the tablecloth over it. You won't either. <laughs> All my patterns are on there. All right, all right. Let's not get excited. We'll use the dining room. Where are the potatoes? Well, you won't find them standing in the middle of the kitchen with your hands on top of your head. <laughs> Look for them. What dishes do you want to use, Daddy? It doesn't matter, kitten. Not the good ones, Dopey. I don't see any potatoes. But they wouldn't be in the drawer with the dish towels. <laughs> Look in the refrigerator. Holy <laughs> Father, are you going to let Bud go around in the kitchen in that shirt? He looks like he's been crawling under the house. What's wrong with this shirt? Just a little dusty. Bud, go put on a clean shirt. I haven't got one. They're all in the wash. Well, get one out of the wash. They're not ironed. Mom didn't get a chance. What are we going to have for dinner, Daddy? Well, what we always have. Shall I put on a soup plate? Yes, put on the soup plate. We haven't got any soup. Don't put on a soup plate. <laughs> I wish I was on a cattle boat. Telephone, I'll get it. Don't get in any long-winded conversation. I just know it's Ralph. He always calls just at... Hello? Hello, Margaret. Oh, no. This is Betty Anderson. Mother isn't here. Who is it, Betty? This is Mrs. Rodney. I was to call your mother about the PTA. Oh, just a minute. It's Mrs. Rodney, Father, for Mother, about the PTA. I'll take it, Princess. You go out and get dinner started. Oh, how I hate that row. Hello, Mrs. Rodney. This is Mr. Anderson. Margaret? No, this is Mr. Anderson. Mrs. Anderson is out of town, but I have all the information for you, Mrs. Rodney. You're uh, calling about the PTA room mother's tea? Yes, I'm the chairman. Margaret was going to tell me about a recipe for the punch. Well, I have everything right here in a book. We'll just run right through it. Oh, dear, do you have a pencil? 
Yes, I think I have. Oh. <laughs> Whatever I'm thinking about, I couldn't use your pencil. You're on the other end of the line. Uh, yes. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Uh, excuse me. Kathy, where are you going with that laundry? I'm going to iron a shirt for Bud. Kathy, wait. Hello. Uh, hello, Mrs. Rodney. I found a pencil. I'll take down the recipe for the punch. Uh, just a minute. Uh, here it is. Uh, five quarts of ginger ale, uh, one quart of grape juice. Could we use uh, something else? I know three or four of the girls don't like ginger ale. Couldn't we use pineapple juice? Well, I, I don't know. It says here... Dad. Excuse me, Mrs. Rodney. What is it, bud? Betty doesn't want any potatoes, and Kathy doesn't want any, and I can get along without them. Do you want me to peel a potato for you? <laughs> Oh, Bud, skip the potatoes. Hello. Uh, hello, Mrs. Rodney. I thought Mrs. Lippert was bringing the potatoes for the salad. <laughs> no, I was talking to my son. Now, uh, about the punch, Mrs. Anderson has here in the book... Oh, before I forget, will you be sure to tell Mrs. Ferguson that we'll have to use her car to pick up the ice? Mrs. Clark's husband has to use their car. Now, what about the chairs? Chairs? Uh, that should be in here somewhere. Father, do you have to camp on the telephone? Well, I don't think we should get the chairs from the junior high school again. Last time, half the girls got gum all over their skirts. Well, in the book here, it says... Uh... Please, Father. And I don't think we should try to have flowers on all the tables. Mrs. Love said her carnations are late this uh, year. Excuse me, Mrs. Rodney. Father, Ralph may be trying to call me. Never mind, I'll get it. Uh, somebody at the door, Mrs. Rodney. I'll call you back. Betty, go out and get dinner going. I'll answer the door. I can't find anything to cook. Well, open a can or something. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm coming. Good afternoon. Is Mrs. Anderson here? No, Mrs. Anderson has unfortunately left town. Oh. Well, I'm Mr. Huber from the paint store. Well, we don't want any painting done, not right now. Oh, I don't paint. I brought out the wallpaper samples Mrs. Anderson wanted to see. I have them right here. I'll just bring them in. Well, couldn't we do this at some more convenient time? Like midnight? <laughs> I think I have some patterns here you'll like for that bedroom. Daddy, would salad oil work just as good as bear grease? Kathy, I thought you were ironing Bud's shirt. Oh, gee, I was, wasn't I? Fire! Did you leave the iron on Bud's shirt? Fire! <laughs> Betty, what's going on? It's all right, Father. I just got a brown shirt, that's all. <laughs> it's quite a family you have, Mr. Anderson. Yes. Now, Mr. Hubert, how do you like this pattern for the bedroom? It's called Volcano. We could use that in the kitchen. <laughs> Here's another one that's quite popular. Flowers in the Mist. Yes, I like that. We'll take that one. Or perhaps you like this one better. Ivy and Hummingbirds. Dad, uh, excuse me. Uh, what is it, Bud? The organization in the kitchen is falling apart. Uh, just a minute, Bud. Uh, Mr. Huber... Now, if your bedroom has a southern exposure, here's a nice one. It's called Waiting for the Robert E. Lee. Father? The pilot lights out on the gas stove. Dad. Father? Dad. Just a minute, Betty. Dad. Yes, bud. I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, now, Mr. Anderson, I have some others here that you might like. It's for you, Father. It's Mrs. Rodney. What are we going to eat, Dad? Mr. Anderson, am I interrupting something? <laughs> oh, of course not. It's always like this. Father! Mommy! Margaret! You home? Excuse me, Mr. Hubert. I have some others to show you. Just take your time, Mr. Anderson. Margaret. Hello, Jim. Oh, am I glad to see you. How'd you get here? I thought you were on the train. Well, it's a long story, dear. What in the world is going on? The house is full of smoke. And... Mrs. Rodney's waiting on the phone. Do you want to talk to her again, Father? No, never. <laughs> Margaret, take the phone. Talk to her. What's the matter, dear? Tell her I'm home and that I'll call her later, Betty. Gee, Mom, it's sure good to see you. Well, 
I've been gone a full 45 minutes. <laughs> Mommy, oh, oh, boy. Thank goodness you're home, Mother. Well, we're glad she's home, but let's not be hysterical about it. <laughs> the house fell apart. Didn't need to fall apart. It takes a little time to get things organized, that's all. By that time, we'd be dead. <laughs> Starvation. Are you leaving again, Mother? Margaret, whatever happened that you missed your train to Toledo or something, I, I think it's all for the best. Oh? Yes, I've been thinking... There's really no reason for you to go to Toledo alone. I uh, thought I needed it for my self-reliance. Well, I have a much better idea. No need for you to make that long trip alone. Your folks haven't seen the kids in a long time. Why don't we all go? <laughs> oh, boy! Yeah, we can eat on the train. What if Ralph calls? <laughs> It's all right with me, dear, but I'd hate to take you away until you've done what you wanted to do. What's that, honey? Well, you were going to show me how to run the house with simplicity and efficiency. I wouldn't want to miss learning self-reliance. <laughs> The Andersons will be right back. This is a call to service for 50,000 young women. That figure, 50,000, is the number of student nurses needed this year. To qualify as a student nurse, a young woman must be a high school graduate or college student of good health and character. To answer this call, go to your nearest hospital or collegiate school of nursing or talk with your school advisor. <laughs> Good ship Anderson had rough sailing this afternoon with Jim at the wheel. But now the regular skipper is back at the helm, and it's full speed ahead and steady as you go. It's a few minutes later in the Anderson living room, and the last remnant of the afternoon storm is being sent on his way. Like this. Thank you for stopping by, Mr. Huber. Thank you, Mrs. Anderson. Goodbye. Goodbye. I can't understand it, Margaret. I'm an efficient man. I'm a capable organizer. What happened in this house when you stepped out the door? I can't understand it. Well, dear, it was probably just one of those days. I know darn well it wasn't my fault. My business depends on efficiency, knowing right where everything is, knowing exactly what's going on. Of course, dear. Now, how in the world did you miss the 4.30 train? I made the reservations myself. I got the time right, I know. Well, you got the 4.30 right, dear, but it was 4.30 tomorrow morning. <laughs> How could that railroad have made a mistake like that? <laughs> Join us again next week, and we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. In our cast were Ted Donaldson as Bud, Jean Vanderpile, Rhoda Williams, Norma Jean Nilsson, Lynn Whitney, Howard Culver, Bill Foreman, and Don Stanley speaking. Father Knows Best is directed by Andrew C. Love, transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Every Friday evening, there's a trio of top programs on this station. The Mario Lanza Show presents that fine singing star in person, along with a lovely guest artist. Then, for Western song and adventure, listen to the Roy Rogers Show. And for top satirical entertainment, go inside Bob and Ray. Yes, Friday is fine when you tune this station and hear Mario Lanza, Roy Rogers, and Bob and Ray. Now, it's Frank Lovejoy with Night Beat on NBC.